Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we are talking about the terrible darkness of the INFJ personality type. And okay, some of you viewers might be surprised by this statement because they'll be looking at my YouTube channel and they'll be like, you, dark? You are the lightest, most peaceful and most easygoing person I've ever seen. Eric, where is this darkness? <laughs> well, let me tell you, first of all, after spending um, years digging further and further down into my psyche, uh, after digging down like past my whole entire Netflix collection of memories, you know, after passing by, you know, all my childhood memories, I did manage to find the dark door that said Eric's Darkness. And opening that door, I saw like a small speck of dirt and that was basically it. That was all the darkness that was inside of me. Uh, it was that one speck of dirt. And today we're talking about that one speck of dirt. That one little dark spot that I have as an INFJ. Okay, just kidding. Like any person in the world, INFJs carry a darkness. Every personality type has the capacity to do harm. Some people, like Jordan Peterson, would argue that one of the most important things you can do is to recognize your capacity to be a terrible person. Any person has the capacity to be bad. Anyone can do or say bad things or can think of doing it. And even if you have not done anything, you have the capacity in yourself under the right conditions or depending on your environment and your upbringing to evoke those traits and to hold that to the world. And beyond that, if you are unable to cultivate and understand this side in yourself, this side might act as a shadow. You might be unaware of the harm that you cause the world. Through this, a lot of terrible actions in the world come with great good pure intentions. A lot of time the things we do, we do because we believe that they are good. But if there is one thing we cannot trust, it is the human mind. Because as great as the human mind is, the human mind is also good at self-deception. That means we cannot always be 100% clear on what we are thinking and what we are doing. And as you start examining relationship decisions and things you've done in the past, it should become abundantly clear that while you sometimes had good intentions in things you did, the choices in hindsight were the wrong ones. And how you felt in that situation was not an accurate explanation of how you should feel or what you should know about that situation. That means you are bound to make the mistakes you're bound to make bad decisions in life in relationships at work and in any choice you do you trick yourself and that means you have the capacity to trick yourself into doing things that you don't expect and beyond that you have the power to think that you're doing something for a certain reason while in reality you're doing it for another reason so the INFJ darkness, the terrible twistedness of the INFJ. <laughs> Why INFJs can commit terrible things. The way I see it, an INFJ has the capacity to use, in many ways, their ability to uh, manifest an ideal or an archetype. And sometimes the ideas that they manifest are terrible ideas. That means INFJs, um, they can manifest great ideals, great concepts, but also truly twisted ideals and truly twisted concepts. Looking back at my history, I can revisit the days back when I was a convinced uh, vegan anarchist extremist. And I can look back at those times and I can think of uh, the psychology that I carried in those situations. I can remember that um, in many times 
I carried a sense of elitism. I lived according to extremely strict rules, rules that I assumed that everyone should abide by. And I was prone to do anything possible in order to shame or manipulate or push people into buying into my ideology. I was prepared to do or say anything that would push them to get on my side. And I was prepared to be the person necessary to be a weapon to realize my ideas. The aggression at which I pursued my ideology and my dreams and uh, how I went about addressing my ideas was at many times highly volatile. Often I would maneuver people against each other and I would turn groups against each other. I would be uh, masterminding different movements. I would be the person in the back, the person uh, pulling the strings and the person getting everybody to move in a certain direction. Often I stood behind somebody, somebody I thought was strong and powerful enough to represent my ideals and I made sure that they went where I needed them to go and I was prepared to do this in order to get what I wanted. And of course, I thought that I was doing the right thing. I was absolutely certain that uh, the values that I had, the views that I had, were worth it and I lived by this um, kind of uh, by any means necessary mentality. I believed that I needed to realize my ideals by any means necessary. I needed to get things done and I needed to use whatever force necessary. Now looking back I can say that I was the most horrible to one person in particular and that was myself. Often um, I would starve and exploit and manipulate and treat myself as a slave to my own ideals. I was not beyond any form of self-manipulation. I was not beyond any form of uh, self-harm. I would do whatever I could to shame myself, to push myself to do the right thing, to do what I thought was the right thing. And how I treated myself, I treated myself uh, the way a psychopath would treat somebody. I treated myself as a person that needed to be cut and shaped and punched to be the person necessary. Any form of weakness was frowned upon, laughed at, scoffed at. I ridiculed myself every day. I thought, oh my God, you're so stupid. How can you be like this? Seriously, man, you need to shape up. You need to control yourself. You need to be a better person. Oh my god, you're so hypocritical. Once again, you're not good enough. Once again, you fail. And you'll always fail unless you start working harder. And I kept doing this. I knew exactly how to push myself to get where I needed to be. I knew exactly where my breaking points were. And I knew exactly what my sensitivities were. And I knew exactly how to exploit those sensitivities. So, but in the very mo end, I can say that while there were small instances of things that I said to people that I shouldn't have and while there were things that I did to other people that I should not have done, ultimately the one person I need to ask for forgiveness is myself. Ultimately the one person that I need to learn to respect and one person I need to listen to from now on is myself. And that is the person that has faced ultimately the biggest crimes of humanity. <laughs> the person that has faced the most difficulties in life from my own point of view, because of myself, is myself. And uh, so I can say that uh, thinking about it, I have no choice but to forgive myself. I have no choice but to um, accept who I am and what I've done. And beyond that, I am terribly relieved. I am really, really relieved that I have discovered my own capacity towards uh, being uh, uh, cruel. And uh, I am also happy in a sense that there was no projected narcissist out there that I could blame everything on, that I couldn't really put this on anybody else. When I look back at my own life, my own decisions and my own struggles in life, 
I could not say that uh, my parents were to blame for who I was or for what I've been through or for what I've experienced. I mean, of course, there were things that they could have done differently. But ultimately, I can say that they gave me a good upbringing, that they took care of me, that they were very accepting, that they were very peaceful, that they gave me stability, they gave me a lot of things. And I can only be appreciative of those things. Now, the only person I could really blame ultimately for the issues that I faced in life, and that includes the burnout that I drove myself to and the stress that I faced and uh, the issues that I experienced in relationships, well, that was myself. Often, I would not even realize my own boundaries and I didn't know how my actions were going to impact me on the longer perspective. I didn't realize that I was going to hit the burnout for what I did. I didn't realize that I had limits and I didn't realize that I had my own needs I needed to take care of. I thought that I could ignore these things and I thought that these things were not important. And so the most thing I want to leave with you is I don't believe that INFJs are Hitler-like villains. I mean, many times I believe INFJs and the villainous nature of the INFJ is more to become a martyr. Very much INFJs tend to make an example out of themselves. They tend to punish themselves. They tend to harm themselves. And often they do so to leave a mark on the group. Anything an INFJ does is because they want to influence the world in a certain way or to set an example. And INFJs put themselves through a lot. INFJs are incredibly hard on themselves. Much harder than we are on other people. So I think a lot of the time the issues that I caused in relationships there were, they were not so much me causing harm to another person as much as it was collateral damage. They had to suffer with me because I made myself suffer. They had to feel pain for me because I made myself feel pain. They had to feel stress and anxiety because of me because I made myself feel anxiety. A lot of time, the worst thing an INFJ can put the world through is the things that we put ourselves through and that means INFJs put the world through a roller coaster. We put friends and family members and the people around us uh, through terrible things because they have to watch how we treat ourselves and they have to deal with our energy and our emotions and our mood and our grumbliness and our moodiness and all those things while we do. <laughs> so in many ways, uh, I think INFJs should not fear confronting their own inner darkness. No, I don't think you have anything to fear, really. I think uh, if you look back at it, you're human. And the things you did were out of the thing you hate most, ignorance. And you're hum human. Uh, ultimately, Anything you do can be summed up by that. You're a human and uh, humans have the capacity to be great and to be terrible. And often we're a bit of both. So yeah, this is the INFJ darkness. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it told you something important. It sure told me something important. Actually, I learned so much from making videos. Often it's self-therapy for me. It's how I grow and it's how I respond to and learn and recognize things about myself. So. If it can help somebody else, I'm happy for it. If it would get one view, I'd be happy for it as well, because even if it's just one person, it's one person, that's great. And even if it would just be me, it's just me, and that's still good. Thank you all for watching, and if you want, leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. See you all in the next video.